All right, everyone, uh, we are going to get started. Um, good afternoon, or depending on where you are, I guess it's still early enough in the morning. Um, my name is Will Devlin, uh, and I'm, I'm joined here, <coughs> excuse me, by Jeff Hawes. Uh, and this is what it means to be a modern marketer. We're, we're going to talk a little bit uh, as marketers um, about the evolution of marketing and um, how our jobs have changed as, as uh, you know, folks that sit on the mainly on the b2b marketing side but work with a lot of consumer facing marketers uh, throughout so we're going to cover a little bit uh, around uh, the evolution of the marketing practice in general uh, and we'll talk about why that evolution has taken place and what it means for today for you to to consider yourself a modern marketer and how you can look to uh, look to the future there so um so again jeff i'll let you introduce yourself before we get kicked off uh, yeah, uh, Jeff Hawes, uh, Senior Marketing Manager here, uh, been here for a few years and uh, really uh, excited to talk about um, how the marketer can get more data savvy and, and do their jobs better. And I'm Will Devlin, I'm the VP of Marketing at Message Gears, um, which is a customer marketing platform for large enterprises. So we, we work with um, a lot of big brands um, that uh, are sending a ton of email and messages uh, every month and we're and uh, what our platform does is enable them to to get access to more data. Uh, so we see this every day. We see this all the time uh, in in uh, marketers being able to do some creative things and create some great experiences just by by having access to data. Uh, a few housekeeping things. Um, <clears throat> feel free to ask questions uh, in the chat. Uh, we'll we'll devote some time towards the end. we're We're going to be here about twenty twenty five minutes. We'll devote some time towards the end of the discussion to, to get to that, but we want it to be interactive. There will also be a few polls that we'll, we'll launch throughout the discussion uh, and encourage you to, uh, to, to, to participate. So um, so let's, when we talk about the, the history of, of marketing and the evolution of marketing, I don't wanna go back a hundred years because I don't think that's relevant. I mean, we'll look at the post, the, the audience analysis afterwards. I don't think it's relevant to talk about something that's a hundred years ago. Uh, and, and what it was like to, to be a marketer. Um, but I do think we'll, we'll, oh, no. it, it would be, that would actually be a really cool factor. Uh, yeah. Um, but but to, to focus really on the, probably the last 15 to 20 years, uh, there's mm -hmm. been a, a, a huge change, obviously, in how marketers behave and, and what we're doing right now, which is all online. Um, and, and the requirements for, for being effective uh, as a brand uh, require you to to be online and and essentially ever present. Um, and so, when I think about you know, I started in, in marketing. Um, unfortunately for me to say this, it was close to 20 years ago. Um, and I worked for a company called uh, Overton's, which sold boating accessories and water sports equipment. And I told him I would do this, but my my old colleague Dan Owens was supposed to be on this. He registered for it, and he sent me a text a little while ago saying he couldn't be here, so I'm going to give him a hard time on that. But um, my first uh, exposure to to marketing was right at the dawn of people getting comfortable with this this concept of e-commerce. And at Overton's which was primarily a catalog company and then we were purchased by a company called gander mountain which had a bunch of different stores it was an outdoor retailer mm -hmm. um the website really served as a function of it was just another advertising vehicle there, there wasn't a lot uh, especially at the beginning of three or so there weren't a lot of people that were all that comfortable giving up their credit card information for some company on the internet that was a very foreign concept um for some reason they were totally fine calling a call center and giving it to a stranger over the phone. But um, but transacting online just, it, it felt different and weird to people. And handing you know, I, your, think, I, I always enjoy the the old, you know, the, the credit card yeah, thing. The, the paper like, thing and you get a copy of it, right. And that just sit under the register, like that's safe. Um, yeah, <laughs> but, but that was that was my first exposure to it. And it was very, very much, there's a digital marketing team, e-commerce team, and your job is to, you know, just figure out the web stuff. And if people transact on the website, awesome. Um, but we just want to either make sure we're driving store traffic or we're driving, uh, you know, calls to the call center to place orders and things like that. And of course, as you started getting into the, the years, uh, to, the, to the, the second part of the decade, 
people were starting to get more comfortable and, and e-commerce was more of a more of a thing. Um, but but it was very much, you know, e digital marketing was very much a separate thought versus marketing or, or you know, catalog marketing, database marketing or store marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was a totally, totally foreign concept. Yeah, it was its own uh, silo. Uh, you know, the web created another thing. It, it wasn't even thought of as an extension of the, the brand to an extent, but I think in the early days, it was kind of looked at, I think, as a, a, almost a brochure. And uh, it, That's right. yeah. you weren't thinking about it in terms of how do we, how does it drive sales and, and how does it, how does it uh, work into our marketing engine? If you weren't thinking of it as a marketing thing, it, it, it almost just became something you had to have after a little bit, you know, in the early, in the mid nineties, you know, whatever. But as you got toward 2000, like, well, I guess we should have a website, right? And uh, I was in, uh, I was in newspapers for a while. And I know yeah. in the newspaper world, there was all this discussion of, do we put our stories online? Like, do we put them on the web? They're, they're in our paper. Um, and that discussion sounds crazy now. Like a newspaper would go, oh, no, we don't want to put anything online. Uh, but yeah, it was a real thing because you're worried about advertisement and you're worried about uh, people not getting the paper. And I mean, to be fair, they clearly were right to be worried about that because yeah, uh, if you know about the in newspaper industry, uh, you know, yeah. there's a reason I'm not there anymore. Um, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, like they were worried about that. And, and, you know, you, you think about Amazon and Amazon's coming on there and Jeff Bezos says, I'm going to sell all these books online. And people thought he was crazy. You sell books in a bookstore. And so it just, it, people didn't know what to do with it a little bit at first. And, and it definitely was not thought of as part of a holistic marketing and sales strategy uh, early on as, as it evolved. It, to me, it's very interesting to talk about these things now. It, it's not that far in the past, right? Like, and I think really where um, where where things really started to change is obviously you know the internet started gaining popularity, and it was it was much more than okay, like this is an advertising vehicle for my company. Like, people can transact on the internet. I can do all of that right there, right? And what else can we do with that? But I think there were two big big sort of milestones that happened. Um, really both, both of them around like 06 and 07, which was the emergence of the smartphone, um, which essentially put the internet in your pocket, um, at the usable internet in your pocket. It's not like, you know, the smartphone created the internet on the phone, but it was much more before, before then it was a novelty, right? Like, um, and then cloud computing. And the, the, the way businesses could track and store um, you know, interactions and just massive amounts of data in a very usable, very um, performant way and, and consolidate data into, um, into, into uh, cloud data storage systems. Both of those things sort of, you know, the dawn of that was in that, in that you know, 2006, 2007. And I think as we, we got into the, uh, you know, 2010s, is really where adoption, the the early adopters and the innovators really started to to latch onto that. And you know, the world as we know it today is is um, it's hard to remember a time before Amazon just delivered stuff to our door the same day. Or like I didn't have my phone in my pocket, right? Like, I I think the phone was huge in all of this. Uh, the phone was a massive change. You think about prior to the smartphone being in your pocket in your purse you kind of had to take an active measures to be a consumer. Uh, in your normal day-to-day -day life, you're walking around the sidewalk, you're driving down the street, you're sitting in your living room, doing whatever. You're not really a consumer at that moment. You're, you're living your life. And I, I think you kind of thought of those two worlds as sort of separate. Occasionally, you would make a conscious choice to walk into a brick and mortar store and shop or when the internet came around even when e-commerce began it was i'm going to sit in my chair at my computer and i'm going to get on the internet and go look for a book on amazon or whatever but the phone it really changed a lot because when the phone came in first before really push and all that became a major thing you at least had the internet right there. Like suddenly you don't have to make this conscious effort to do something. You could be sitting at dinner and, and your, uh, your 
your wife gets up to, to go to the bathroom and you go, well, look at the phone. And you get on there and you see something and, and you buy it. Mm -hmm. You're not anywhere near any place where you would normally be thinking of, uh, of engaging in commerce, but suddenly you were. And now with mobile push and SMS and no channel being used for marketing, now you don't even have to be thinking about it. You don't have to be doing anything. You can just be walking down the street and be sitting in your car. You can be watching TV and, and you're watching your show and suddenly your phone just buzzes and you go, oh, oh, wait, what is that? Oh, there's a sale on on shirts at J. Crew or whatever. Like, and suddenly you're going, oh, I guess I should check that out. And it's like the the lines got blurred and, and almost completely obliterated between sort of the consumer part of your life and the real part of your life. And now I think it, it sort of made consumers more sophisticated and demanding in what they wanted because this was going to be involved in their lives, whether they really wanted it to or not, it, it was going to engage with them even if they weren't trying to. Yeah, and, and along with the phone obviously came, um, you know, the the ability you know the data being available so that you could stream uh, movies or or any you, you could do any sort of transactions uh, in, in a device that fits in the palm of your hand um, and and even on the internet uh, on your on your computer or your laptop or whatever you don't have to dial in and like it you're just you're always on you're yeah. always connected it's just another piece of you and and those two things I think you know really have changed the game for brands and for marketers in general because now we are all consumers we're always connected at every time and so we're sort of always just interacting whether we are conscious of it or not with brands or and, and that line is very blurry and so things have to be seamless and it's part of the marketer's job to make it seamless and to you know as as a brand and, and um, you know, part of the brand building piece of marketing uh, you, you have to understand how to play with the data that you know is available about your customers, what you know about them, how can you serve them great experiences. Um, and so it's it's a little bit more than just creating a really catchy campaign or, you know, it's very, very focused on creating this really great experience. And so that's, you know, there is no today, there's no digital versus traditional it's just marketing now, right? We're 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 creating this brand based on um, great experiences. And there's a few things that come on. You mentioned Amazon earlier. Like, I don't even think about half the time the stuff I buy on Amazon. And I think I, I'm not I'm not alone in that. But like, Amazon packages show up on my door, and I'm like, what did I order? It's like Christmas. I don't even remember what I ordered. I ordered so often, and it's just because it's like in my in the palm of my hand. I'm scrolling through. And I see something, I buy it, and it's just going to come to my. I don't have to do any other actions, and it's just it's so convenient. And again, it's such a um, we're so used to it now uh, that it it is. It's very hard to remember <laughs> that there was a time before that um, that you you didn't do that. And I think of other really like leading brands um, that you just create. You wouldn't call them like remarkable experiences, but they make my life easier. Um, you know, during the pandemic here, I didn't want to go shopping in any, any stores. I just felt nervous going anywhere. Um, and, you know, there were stores like Best Buy where I could buy something on, online and, and go pick up in the store. That's not a novelty thing. But I could also, you know, shop online and in an hour go pull into a parking spot out front on the app, tell them I'm here and they come bring it out to my car. I don't have to, do, I don't have to get out of my car. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty remarkable to me, right? And that to me is... Sure, there's a there's logistics around that, and there's IT around that, but that's a marketing, that's a brand building thing. That makes me feel good about doing business with Best Buy. Best Buy just gave me something cool. I could go tell that story to somebody, be like, "Yeah, okay, cool. You pulled into a part like curbside pickup or whatever is not novel, but like that's because we've already gotten that used to it. Like we're already used to brands giving us like really convenient, really cool experiences. Starbucks talking about their app and like how I can pay with the app, like earn points for free coffee and stuff like that. It's like table sticks already. Um, it's, it's such a, so as a marketer, you have to know how you can harness and create the, harness data and create those experiences, right? You, and so with that, you have to be a little bit tech savvy. And I think to, to your point earlier, Jeff, you really have to care about data. Yeah, and, and 
you know, data's mattered for a while. I mean, I, I think marketers know that, particularly at the enterprise level, like data has mattered and they know that. And if you asked, you polled a hundred enterprise marketers, hey, is data important to your job? Sure. I mean, a uh, hundred ninety-nine. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's important to my job. But do they know what that means? Like, do they really know much beyond that? You know, I, I, I'm doing email. Uh, I use data to personalize the uh, subject line or the or the header in the email with their first name. And obviously, I use data to do that. And maybe I update loyalty points or something in the email. And and yeah. um, and so data driven. Yeah. And, and you know, like vaguely, like okay, data. Obviously, data has to get pulled in for that, sure. But there, there's got to be another step to that, right? Like you've got to take a next step. It can't be as simple as sitting there just kind of knowing data is important and then thinking, well, I, I, I don't. If you ask them, do you know where it comes from? Do you know where it's stored? Do you know how it's getting to where you're using it? Um, and if you have challenges with it, do you understand those challenges and do you understand why they're happening? I think whereas 99 or 100 of them would say it's important, a lot lower percentage would be able to tell you, yeah, I know what data warehouse we're using and yeah, I, I know how that data gets in there and I, I know how it gets to me and um, and I know the, the challenge we have, I know why we have them. Um, but if you're going to be a modern marketer, if you're going to take those steps forward and kind of evolve, you have to start taking ownership of that a bit more, I think, and not just getting the the knowledge, but the the, the deeper understanding of really kind of data as a, a as an organizational tool and what it's doing for you throughout the whole process. So when we when we say technical content, I'm going to launch our first poll here. But like when we say it's important for marketers, or is it important for marketers? to understand more technical things. It's really talking about data. And, and, and you know, it's, it's where's your data live? How is it stored? How are you able to access it? And how are you able to activate on it? Um, so those are, those, you know, there's the creative brain piece of marketing, but this is the more, more technically uh, minded piece. So I'm gonna throw this poll up, uh, which is in your opinion, how important is it for marketers to understand technical concepts? Uh, I'm going to leave it up here for a minute. And we'll get some. Uh, we'll get some results. Um, but yeah, this is this kind of takes us into um, the, the next talking point, which is that marketers have to to care about data because, again, in order for us to deliver those great experiences and build a great feeling around our brands, you know, quite frankly, we just we have to care. Um, I'm going to collect a couple more responses as we get in here. Looks like we got most people in. All right, and I will share the results here. So I think most people agree, at least I'm, I'm thankful nobody here said not important at all. Even even it's April Fool's Day, I was kind of holding, holding my breath that somebody would do something. But, but most people would agree that it's either pretty important or it's absolutely necessary, which, um, you know, uh, thank God, I guess. <laughs> it's really the, the uh, you know, it's, but uh, data, it's, it's, this is not something that is exclusively IT's job to care about or to, to know what they're doing anymore, right? And I think I, I go back again to, to my, my earlier days in marketing and like, I was just, like you were talking about, like I was just happy to have email addresses and first names and maybe I could do something cool with that. Um, but like I didn't know where our data was stored, what format it was in, how I could get access to it and, and activate on that. Um, and so, yeah, marketing has, has really gone from knowing that data is important to data is vital. What data do you have available to you? How and where is that data stored? How can I utilize that data? Um, and I think creativity and being able to, to deliver those great experiences really comes from an understanding of, of what data you have and how you can use it. Um, and that leads to, I send better messages. Um, you know, if you're able to have a full understanding of those concepts and then get tools that, you know, are able to work really seamlessly with their data, um, yeah, that can decrease your needs and dependencies on IT. You don't have to go ask IT for questions or updates or things like that every five minutes. 
um, and ultimately actually lowers cost for the company. If you know, okay, I, I should choose this path for activating data and this suite of tools for doing that because it works well with, with the database that everything's stored in or it, it, it helps things run smoother and it helps you execute at a high level. Yeah, the independence from IT, I think is huge. And, and I think, you know, you mentioned you, you can't think that it's just IT's job and that's really important. Um, the, the, the wants and the needs and the attitude toward data on the IT side is going to be very different from that on the marketing side. You can't just cede that entire ground to the tech side of the house. They are interested in governance and security and privacy. Uh, that's what they want with data. They don't really care if you're able to personalize your emails. I mean, I like I'm sure on a on a, on a deep enough level, yeah, they recognize there's probably some gain for the company and you personalize it, yeah, whatever. It's a lot less headache if you're just sending out blasting newsletters and not worrying about the personalization. A lot less headache for them. They've got to deal with the fallout if there's a breach or if, if there are problems with, with privacy data, GDPR, all that, that's probably falling on them. You want to send better messages. You want to create better customer experiences. And if you're going to do that, you've got to recognize that you play a role in all of this. You need to understand what are the challenges that I have to overcome in order to do that and identify the tools that can help you get it done. Because if you're sitting here waiting for IT to find that solution for you and bring it down to, to the marketing department and go, hey, guys, we found it. We got Eureka. You guys are going to be able to send better messages now. IT's probably not going to do that. You're going to be waiting a very long time. They're going to find solutions that are going to help governance and privacy and security. Uh, but if that solution doesn't help you, they don't really care that much. Um, you know, we, we hear about marketers who have a, a, a CDP or a, it was kind of thrust upon them. Hey, tech side, we, we got this because of, because of whatever reason, but probably not the same reason you would have gotten it. Do you want to take ownership of this? Like, do you want to do better with the customer experiences you're delivering? If you do, make sure that you are taking ownership of the whole part of data, how it goes through your organization. And don't just let IT run it, because if IT runs it, you're not going to get what you need. They're going to get what they need. One of the things we've seen when we, we work with very large senders, what we call super senders, obviously, but you know, very large B2C brands. And there's been a um, a shift in the last, I would say, five years ish, you know, a little bit longer, but more mainstream adoption of cloud data warehouses and consolidating everything into a what we would consider a modern data infrastructure. Uh, last year, for example, like Snowflake had like the biggest software IPO ever at the time, right? Um, but Redshift, BigQuery, there's 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 a, a lot of them that a lot of brands are moving to and figuring out um, this is this is essentially becoming the hub of all data activity is consolidated into a modern data warehouse and then you can plug different tools into that that like like message gears that that read directly off of that data. Um, I am interested to hear from the audience in our second poll. Uh, where are where's your company in terms of of thinking about a modern data warehouse? Um, so are you already using one? Uh, do you plan to invest in one? Uh, are you um, or is it not in your near term plans? Are you you know are you happy with or is your IT staff seem happy with with what they're uh, they're currently doing? So I'll give you a minute here to to uh, to fill this out and then we'll we'll go into the the future of marketing. About 10 more seconds. Really interesting results on this one. Pretty polarizing. <laughs> it is. It is. It's pretty crazy, actually. It's um, all right. I'm going to close that. So the results on this one uh, are it's it's either a yes or no. <laughs> There's there is no middle ground here. Uh, so 60% um, of of the audience here already use a modern data warehouse like a Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, uh, and then 40% it's not in the near term plans at all. Which I'd be interested to um, you know it, it it does depend on on who those those companies are. Some of them may not have a need for it. Um, 
either they may be too small or, or you know, B2C, but we'll, we'll pivot into the future of marketing. Um, so marketers, I, I talked earlier about being you know, innovators or fast followers. And I think as I look towards you know, more adoption of a modern data warehouse environment and being able to create really more rich experiences, finding tools that um, are able to activate on data immediately and create a great seamless experience for the consumers. I do think that marketers you know, have to move from what I think most of us would probably consider a mainstream adopter. Like I'm gonna wait till somebody else figures out how to do that. Um, and then we'll, we'll hop on when it's more popular. Uh, versus uh, I think more marketers need to be pushing to move faster and take on these things with more agility. And I think you know there's there's examples that aren't even tech related um, that I can think of that um, you know are are more towards that fast follower innovator thing. Wendy's is a great example that I think of all the time as a as a, as a marketer of on social media they have this this personality that's a little like provocative and a little just funny and and um, you know they they're not afraid to rock the boat a little bit and that was uh, I think. Brand, a lot of brands do that now, or a lot of brands try to do that now, and it, it somewhat feels, you know, inauthentic. But it was it wasn't that long ago. Wendy's was doing it was like, what the hell, Wendy's? Why? Why is Wendy's talking like that? Um, it and, but it was funny. And it, be in the room when they uh, when they sort of had that idea of like, hey, we're gonna make Twitter be. Uh, why, why don't we just be really kind of uh, sarcastic and go yeah go crazy with it? Like, it, who came it, up? With it? Well, I don't know. Who came up with but it? But I, I applaud them for doing it because, you know, that it's created this whole extra piece of their brand. Like they're just kind of known for that. And um, that's so that's a, like a non tech example of like being first there really helps plant the flag of like, you know, and I also think, you know, in our space, like tech adoption, like Movable Inc. is a great partner of ours uh, and they do really great things early on. Um, it was all about like, okay, you can put this countdown clock in your email, or you can do, you know, put the weather up in the corner. Isn't that neat? And it was the early adopters to to that that really were like, here, here's a use case I would love to do. You know, here's I would love to be able to put, I'm, you know, NBA team. I'd love to put live score and stats and, and traffic to the, you know, to the arena, that kind of thing. Like th that really like set the tone. And now like there's thousands of use cases and amazing things and you know I, every every big brand i know uses a movable link today right and and i think you know that there's there's endless uh endless use cases but there's a lot coming down you know the functionality that you have to utilize you know amp for email um rcs artificial intelligence at this point a lot of those things will be more of a mainstream adopter but getting a, early to the party and as marketers, there's new avenues and channels to explore. There's, you know, how how are we going to utilize things like TikTok, or, you know, are, are we going to do anything with Clubhouse, or or things, you know, they're sort of trendy. There's stuff coming out all the time, and it's really hard to keep up. So marketers have to understand how to leverage data to create those great experiences across every interaction, but they also need to to um, try to push their organization to be more at the innovator level versus the mainstream adoption level, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and you know, we talk about the modern data warehouse and 40% uh, of the people, it's not in their plans. And and like you said, they could be B2C or whatever they could be, but if those are B2B companies that need it, uh, they've already missed the boat on it. The modern data warehouse is not the future, it's the present. Uh, you know, that you mentioned it. That Snowflake IPO, the biggest MarTech uh, IPO ever, it doubled it on day one. It, it was mind blowing what happened with Snowflake when they went public. That does not happen in a world where modern data warehouses have already not established themselves. Like that is there, it is here, it has been here. This is not a flash in the pan. Snowflake did not become Snowflake overnight they've been building and building and building for a bunch of years and now like this was a, a pinnacle not a not a beginning uh this was not their birth and i think that can be a big eye opener for a lot of people that like oh my god i didn't know the modern data warehouse was this big a thing and it 
it, it makes you think, you know, okay, you want to skate where the puck is going, not where it is. Well, where is it going? And, you know, I, I think of a, a warehouse first approach, you know, yeah, you've got the modern data warehouse, you understand the value of a snowflake or redshift or BigQuery, but how do you really put that at the center of your entire marketing operation? Like, how do you move the, the ESP or the CDP? How do you kind of move them off the side and, and put everything, put all your eggs in the basket of your own data and owning it? That feels like where we're going. That feel the future of marketing feels like that's where the modern marketer is kind of looking and having their eye that look, if, if I can get everything centered around that data and I'm working with it live and in real time, that's where I haven't just gotten the modern data warehouse. Like it's one thing to invest in Snowflake and to and to get your data there and, and that's fantastic and that's a great step. But if if you're still taking that data and, and then moving it over here, it, it isn't the center of what you're doing. You, you put it in a good place, you've done, a you've taken a big important step, but you're still doing the old way of, of actually using it. If you can get to where you, you identify the tools and you get something like message gears, but you, you figure out a way to make that the, the center of your universe and everything else is revolving around it, that is really the step that you mean modern marketer if you want to look the future and being that innovator and pushing your organization in that direction that's where i think you need to be looking and going and we're seeing a lot of brands already doing it with the ones that we talk to and the, a lot of the ones we work with they realize that and that's where they're headed yeah and, and you know i'll wrap by saying you know being able to leverage that data not just to personalize an email or, or you know do something like you, you know use that data in a in a relevant way contextually for one-off things but really being able to i know it sounds cliche because it's overused but create a great experience with your brand for consumers and come up with those ideas like that is the that's the evolution of the marketing role right marketers have to say here's the experience we want this is the feeling our brand needs to be giving um, this is the experience we want because those great experiences you'll be known for and 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 that's the ultimate loyalty program um well well jeff that that wraps us up i know we're a little bit uh, over the time we said we'd be so um everybody here we appreciate you taking time out of your day we would love to continue this conversation and hear from you uh, we're on twitter you can find us at, at message gears i'm at w devlin jeff is at jeff Hawes. um we also just dropped a new white paper on our website that talks about this very topic so you can go grab a copy of the evolution of the modern marketer at messagegears.com. We will send everybody a recording of this today so you have it to, to go back to. But uh, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Thank you, Jeff, for, for coming. Yep. Thank you, guys.